become mindful <coughs> the spiritual headquarters of his firm and the world. How many of you come for the first time? How many from Vivaldi? How many from Juhu? How many from Attapu? How many from Surat? Yeah. 
It is especially in India. In India, we have gone and caught up. You know, there is some always attached to the Vedic culture, isn't it? Everything is centered on the Vedic culture in India. The way we live, because we are brought up in a family, in a society which has, I don't think so anyone here has gone to atheist. Sir, back then was not yet come, no? Anyone gone to atheist? <laughs> but uh, we are not a, you know, we are not you know, coming from a godless civilization, but we are coming from a totally less knowledge about God. A civilization has absolutely zero knowledge about God. I always tell most of the people go to believe in God, especially in Hindus. Because they believe in, they believe, they have faith, and they say very strongly, Ham Mante, Ham Mante, Ham Loki Shraddha, Ham Loki Faith. Of course, the recent movie, Kerala Stories. Finished the whole thing. Most of the Hindus they believe in God for two reasons. One, because he is brought up in a culture ki Bhagavan Dena Bhai. Dete rege, manu te ro dete rege. Then, most of the Hindus go to the temple for this one reason. And students before the exams. Sometimes some students write an answer to them. Madam, please give me two marks. <laughs> and then after doing all this, you know, you are sure shot that you will fail when you go to the temple with the results. In the second category, goes to the temple and believes in God, is a category wherein they feel that. I have all these things, my family, my society, my job, my property, my beauty. Let me go to the God and please Him also. In case He is there and he's, if He has given me all this and He will get angry and take away. So better go to the God. So these are the two reasons Hindus go to the temple. Correct or not? Most of them, right? Ek to ki bhagwan dekhe, dusre bhagwan hai ki nahi, patenge ki jaro. Hai sahi mein hai ki naara jaro ki sab lele. Iske liye jaro. That's you know, that's an unspoken reason. It's an unspoken, but unspoken too. It's an unspoken reason, and it's true. It is very much true because when I started doing youth preaching, I could see. Practically, this whole completely Vedic culture, completely God civilization destroyed. What is left in Hindus is Hindus is just money, my own family. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing means nothing. But my own family, now that is also coming to an end. Within the family also there are so many issues. I am not talking about joint family. Joint family is dead and gone, that means people. That is also dead and gone. The current family has been in wife of family. And whether it is old people or become like old furnitures. You know, no. They used to say, in the Vedic culture, they used to say, old is gold. Because the old people would have very, very special values. Vedic and spiritual values. That is why it was to be called as gold. You understand? Have you seen any elder member of the society who is a very spiritualist? Who is very knowledgeable? Have you seen the society respecting him, touching his feet? Have you seen that? Yes. Now, 
then soon that will also disappear. Because nowadays most of the old people, people are waiting when they time. And old people don't want to talk about them. The old people gather together, discuss about the medicines which will suit their body, so that they can be alive. And the young people think that, we don't have to say anything, we don't have to say anything. After three years, we talk the same thing. Only some people are there. The world is in such a terrible situation that you know there is no love, there is no peace, there is no happiness. Everywhere there are such stories. Either in, in relation to this, either in relation to relationship problems, either in relation to financial problems, either in relationship to beauty problems. Beauty problems. The living, the human beings have become so externally conscious that there is a civilization wherein which teaches that the external beauty of what you look is all in all. The external look is all in all. The whole society is centered around that kind of culture, and people in so much of depression. And Shastra said, you are not this body. What are you? Soul. You are a spirit soul. If you want to know about your body today, you need what? Just smell like this. Put your nose like this and sleep. Take it and you sleep. That's your body. Just put your hand like this and sleep. You can you sleep? No, that's your body. That's your body. That's the beauty of the body. You don't take bath for two days and you smell of both. Do you want to take a bath? Do you want to take a bath? Don't touch the coat and don't wash your hand. And don't take a bath for two days. And just smell your body and smell your hand. That's how this body is. And the truth, the second truth about this body is that this body, after a certain time, it starts deteriorating. Deteriorating souls are old age, old age, disease. Can anyone avoid it? Can anyone avoid it? No, no, right? Nobody can avoid it. But everyone will be forced to accept. Correct or not? Everyone will be forced to accept it. Without his choice. That is the truth. This is truth. Education in Vedic time begins with this knowledge. This is the A, B, C of spiritual education. Ten months, repeat with me. This is the A, B, C of spiritual knowledge. Of spiritual knowledge. Which means, Which means we are not this body. We are not this body. We are the spirit soul. We are the spirit soul. Every child should be taught this. Like we are taught in the school of A for apple, B for ball, C for cat, D for me donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> By A B C we become donkeys because we feel that working hard. Like a donkey is a success of life. Money in the pocket and a beautiful girlfriend and all and a wife is the goal of life. It's not true. In the Vedic culture, beautiful or ugly girl, they would always cover their head. Now a beautiful wife and a girlfriend will not cover her head, open her body. The whole world look at her and you walk with pride. Wow. Some really wife will take it. Wow. She is so pretty. Like a wife. They look so bad now. Time is so bad right now. All oh, this is being you know, externally taught. There is no spirituality. Education, working, working hard, getting a job. You know, that's all. And everyone looks at that. There is no, there is no other purpose of life. But the Shastra says, Bara bhumi to hai lo janma yaar, janma saakad kari karo paro upkaar. The Shastra scriptures. You all Indians should know what is the message from the scriptures for an Indian. If I ask you what's your goal of life, right? You will say, 
I'll become a good photographer. Otherwise, I'll become an engineer. Otherwise, I'll become a good businessman. Otherwise, I'll take care of my father's business. I'll become a doctor. I'll, I'll crack G and get into pretty crack some of them. No? And I guess you have to crack something to reach an edit. You have to crack something to reach an edit. No? So you will you know, go to IIT and IIT and get a. I will be placed in IT courses. So, everyone will have a different goal, right? If I ask you what's the goal of life, but if I ask you, what's the goal of human form of life? If all of you are sitting here, are human beings, then there has to be one. Correct? If you ask, what's the goal of human form of life? Then there has to be one. And that is mentioned in Sarkas. Bharat, Bhubito, Hoyo, Jatmayar, Janma, Sarkar, Tari, Paro, Paro, Kutukar. What does it mean? It means those who are born in this part of the creation, of this part of the world, Bharat, Bhubito, Jatmayar, Janma, Sarkar. Do you know Sarkar? Perfect. Janma Sartaka Kari Paro Upaka means you make your life perfect. Paro Paro Upaka. Then you help others to make their life perfect. What is that perfection? What is that perfection? Yes, to be Krishna conscious. To be that is good. Yesterday, <clears throat> I was showing my sons this very challenge. <clears throat> so they wanted to see who wins between Jaguar and Snow Leopard. I told them, you know, Snow Leopard lives in snow, Jaguar lives in, you know, green forest. So the punch strong. I put a video in the National Government. So suddenly, a video came that a jaguar was attacking a herd of deers. And while attacking, the deer gave a birth just before that. And it was the baby. And as soon as the herd of the deers, deers saw the jaguar, they all started running. And the narrator was telling that it is the duty of the mother deer to leave the child in the big grass and run away. So that the child cannot walk now. But then he can come back, she can and take the child after escaping. So she ran from there. But the, 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 the jackpot smelled the child. And it went the small baby, took it, took it in the teeth, ate, <coughs> grabbed her neck and took her. <coughs> so I I was seeing that and I was amazed. Then I told my child, my sons, you know, I told them see how this material world is such a dangerous place. I told you all are also mother of your child. Yes it is. That dear is also child of your mother. Yes. I said, do you have this fear that you will be taken by a tiger like this was? No. But you see. How other species live in so much of fear. That's why I, I told them human birth is very, very special and rare. The struggles which other species have is not there in the human birth. Have you seen a bird eating? They need to eat and eat up. And they eat up. Have you seen that? So they use fear for another eagle will come and catch it, make and fly out. Have you seen monkeys eating? They fill up their neck like this. See, why? Other monkeys will finish their food. How many of you eat like this in your house? Like this, you know, fill up and down. Or fill it, you know, but I think Papa, I guess I'm telling it. How many of you eat? Nobody. The human birth is very, very special. Very, very rare. It has some higher intelligence. And one of the main reasons of that, one of the main achievements of intelligence is, one can understand 
the spiritual subject. One can know its own self in human birth. The veil of his body, you can feel it. You can feel it. You can, you can introspect it. You understand introspect? You can introspect. When you told you about this body from the Bhagavad Gita, the Krishna says, Arjuna, when you come across this shloka of the Gita and if you are told, you can relate it very easily. Right? And the, the easiest way Srila Prabhupada explains is Srila Prabhupada actually who introduced this to the whole world. Who introduced the spiritual subject in a very understandable language was introduced to the world by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada gave this knowledge in a very understandable language. And very practical logic that Prabhupada in the shlokas of where you have to prove the soul's existence. Srila Prabhupada used to give an example. Have you seen a dead body? And everyone would say yes. What's the difference between a dead body and a living body? Consciousness is not there. Consciousness is not there. And the body is right there. Nothing has happened to the body. The body is as it is. Your body and the dead body is the same. It's the same one material. You understand? <laughs> All the chemicals and fats and elements, everything is same. But the dead body starts deteriorating the moment it, the soul lives. Is it? Without the soul, the body has no value. You may love the body, but actually the love is for the real person, that is soul. That is why you never see, you know, <clears throat> you see sometimes in a, in a funeral, you know, some people cry, cry, cry to the extent that they don't allow you to take the body, right? They suppose the gathering says, Are they love so much, the body will love you, they will keep it. अरे नहीं नहीं अपन को अभियान कर रहे हैं इनके साथ में इन लोगों को कितना रो रहे हैं कितना इसको प्रेम कर रहे हैं क्यों नहीं जाके इसको जलाना दे दो इनको हाँ यू सी द बॉडी तो अरे नहीं नहीं अपन को रो रहे हैं बोले तुम लेके जाओ तुम तुम्हारा काम करो हमारा काम इसे मत क्यों क्योंकि रियल पर्सन इज wanted this Mayapur Dham to be the spiritual headquarters of this spiritual mission. Mayapur Dham to be the spiritual headquarters of this spiritual mission. So, you should know about Srila Prabhupada a little bit because we will be going to Samadhi, beautiful Samadhi of Srila Prabhupada here in Mayapur Dham. So, how Srila Prabhupada came up. Srila Prabhupada was born in a Vaishnav Bengali family in Kolkata. And his father, from a childhood, was Vaishnav. His grandchildren, grandparents were devotees. So his father used to always invite devotees to his house. And he would feed them prasadam. All of you had lunch today? Lunch prasadam? How is the Pushan? Oh. He says Indians, if they don't become devotees of God, for sure they become devotees of Pushan. <laughs> and from there they become devotees of God. <laughs> First they become devotees of Pushan. So, Sri Prabhupada's father used to invite sadhus and he used to, after feeding them, he used to tell them that please bless my son. So that he becomes a devotee of Sri Mati Radharani. How beautiful is Radharani? All of you visited the temple, no? All of you visited the temple and see? So, please bless that my son becomes a devotee of Sri And when Sri Prabhupada was growing up, India was under the rule of. As Srila Prabhupada grew up, 
he had a great influence of the Gandhi mission of freedom. And the college he was studying, Shubhash Chandra Bose was one or two class ahead of Shri Prabhupada in the college. And you can imagine Shubhash Chandra Bose. What an impact he had at that time in the youths in the country. It is said the real freedom India got because of he, he chased the British out of the nation. He created fear in their heart to leave. You know that, right? All of you know, no? All of you know or no? Yes. It's he who created the fear. <coughs> the, his his, his uh, army was called in Azad Hind Poch. Azad Hind Poch. So, Prabhupada was very different. So, one day, <coughs> while Shri Prabhupada was in college, one of his friends came to him and told him that there is a very, very special sadhu who has come nearby. Let's go and meet him. So Srila Prabhupada already had so many sadhus whom he has met because his father used to invite them at home and feed them, right? So he already said, no, 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 I have met many. But his friend, you come, you come, please. So he took him. So when the friend took him, it was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, whose Temple is also there, very nearby. And during your visit, you will visit his temple also. So when Shri Prabhupada met Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati they had a conversation. And Shri Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Saraswati who is a spiritual master of Shri Prabhupada, when he saw Shri Prabhupada, he was very impressed. He saw a young, educated, English boy, English speaking boy, who knows why Shri Prabhupada. Who knows the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita? So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sankhapa told Srila Prabhupada, Why don't you are an English speaking young Indian? Why don't you take the message of the Bhagavad Gita, the message of Godhead, to the Western English speaking world? He told him. Srila Prabhupada was already very influenced at that time by Nandi and Shabash Chandra Bose. So Srila Prabhupada replied to him. Who is going to listen to the message of God? By a country which is dominated by foreign forces. We are a dominated country. Who is going to listen to our message in the Western world? So Srila Prabhupada told him something. Strong, but this is that the Saraswati Thakur Srila Prabhupada. He told him very strong to Srila Prabhupada that <clears throat> the message of Godhead, the spiritual message of Gita and Bhagavatam, doesn't depend upon a political situation of a nation. It is an eternal need of humanity in every place, irrespective of their political situation. You understand? You understand what I said? But this is what I said. The message of Gita, the message of Godhead, doesn't depend upon the political situation of a nation. It is a need. Like, you know, if we have to come and preach in the colleges and universities to the students, the society will tell them, I don't want to leave your children. What is your life? 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 Isn't it? Right? Nowadays, you know, Prabhupada used to say, it is like, you know, when you go to the temple, do you take a very nice fresh flower or sarawa murja put together in it? You know, became a spiritual is in old age. It's like that. It's like that. 
But from Srila Prabhupada's conversation, we understand that the message of God is, is not bounded by the boundaries of the nation and also is not bounded by the age. It is a it is a is the basic uh, basic education for a person to become a human being. Like in the Muslims, they say one who has read Quran, he becomes a Muslim. If you have not read it, till then he is actually a He is yet to become a human being. He is yet to become a human being. I have seen, when I was growing up, I never knew so much, but I have seen very practically. And I, all my childhood friends were Muslims. Either they would go to a mosque or a Molana used to come to their house to teach them. How many have you seen that? Right from the childhood. Right from the childhood. And it is that Tibetan culture also. We all are taught up. Thanks to Ramanan Sagar Zaramaya. Otherwise, Adi Purush would become a real one. <laughs> Isn't it true? And, and why? See, why people rejected Adi Purush movie? You know why? Because they had a glimpse of the culture, language, and a very, very emotional, spiritually message Ramayana by Ramayana Sangha. Isn't it true? Because we saw that, that is why we could say this is not Ramayana. Correct or not? Similarly, in the childhood, if you are educated about spirituality, you will never go off. Never go off. So, coming back to Srila Prabhupada, when Srila Prabhupada heard this from Bhakti Siddhartha Sarada, he was very impressed. He was very impressed. That answer, because Srila Prabhupada said, Desh, Ada, Rana, Chaitanya, you know, I'm the dominated country, but Srila Prabhupada woke up with the spiritual values given to him in his childhood. That, if you don't perform bhakti, it is a very miserable life. Forget about going to hell. In this body only, it is so miserable. Every month, the Kali Mano, you say Kali. Kali means the age of quarrel. Kali means the age of quarrel. Here, people are only envious of each other, greedy, selfish, self centered, and power hungry. Isn't it true? Living in such a society, isn't it something? Now you all are students, many of you. But in students of the life, especially if those who are toppers in the class, those who are toppers in the class, they are very simple. And they live in so much stress. If someone comes very close to their mark, finished. Radeshan Prabhu, we will meet him. We used to give an example that some, you know, of course, there is another example. I will not put that. He used to say that those who are toppers, they used to live in so much stress. Some people might just by a little less mark, they will commit suicide. And there will be borderline pass. And they will always be partying because they passed. You know? <laughs> just borderline pass out, grace mark, you know. In the report card, it comes 33 plus 2. Can <laughs> <laughs> you see that? It just passed. I was in that category. My teacher used to call me the chest pass. So does it. The next exam, same. Because I, I, somehow other I, when I, when I, somehow other I was meant for you know this education system because I used to always feel that examination means you should study to pass on. So I used to very thoroughly study physically in the class, match the column, true or false. So four, 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 the five, 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 fifteen, fourteen is passing, right? I used to work it out, and then I, anyways, that's. You don't need to know that. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada when he met, he was very impressed with this answer. And then he realized that people are suffering and going to hell. For them, giving this message of God is more important. 
I will tell you one more story of Shila Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasri Thakur and Shubhash Chandra Bose. Once, Shubhash Chandra Bose, he came to know Shila Prabhupada's guru, Bhakti Siddhartha. He actually was attracting a lot of young people. Attracting a lot of young people to society. Take all of you are there. So, Mahashita Bose went to Shri Prakti Siddhartha and he said that I am seeing, you know, my dear, you know, Sadhuji, I am seeing that you are attracting so many young, you know, youths to your mission, to your matter. I have taken a great responsibility of giving freedom to our nation. I have asked everyone. Give your blood and I will give you. So why don't you please give some of your youths in this great cause? So Bhakti Siddhartha said, have you read the Gita? He said, I have read the Gita. And then, Shri Bhakti Siddhartha said, Shri Bhakti have you read one shloka? Remember which shloka was there? What is it? Translation. Uh, at the time of the death, whoever quits the body. Translation of the verse is that. At the time of death, whoever quits the body, uh, he attains the next body, uh, whatever state of mind he quits the body. At the time of death, whatever state of mind one leaves his body, he gets the next blood. So, do you understand this? Have you read this? He asked. He said, yes, of course. He said, now I want to ask you one thing. If suppose, you, before getting the freedom, you leave your body and then you take birth in London. Your next birth is in London. So at that time, what do you do? Will you fight for the freedom of India from the British? or you will stand with the Britishers to dominate India, what you will do? So you will leave this body and you take birth as a British man. As a British man. So at that time, what you will do? At that time, what you will do? Will you fight for India's freedom or will you fight for the British domination of India? So what is the question about well, at this moment, freedom for India is very important. You see, that is very small. My concern is for not only for, you know, for, this is this is a very bodily cause. You see. This is a very bodily cause. The real reason of humanity suffering is the illusion. It's because of the illusion that there is body and forgetful that there is spirit souls. That is very important. And my concern is not only about the human beings. My concern is that every living being should get connected to God. My mission is far bigger. And then Shubhashana was understood. We very much appreciated Bhakti Siddhartha and never came back to him for asking this. So that is how our know, Acharyas, they preached like this. Even Srila Prabhupada, when he met Bhakti Siddhartha, who was such a strong preacher, he always was contemplating how I will send spread this message of Bhagavad Gita to the whole world. So the Prabhupada initially thought, I will preach in India. He tried a lot to preach in India. He took sannyas from his marriage life <clears throat> in the 60s, of his 60s of age. And then he wrote a lot of scriptures. He wrote the Bhagavatam. And while writing, he was always contemplating that my spiritual master of this Siddhanta he had ordered me to spread the message of the Bhagavad Gita in the Western world. And he was also thinking that if I preach in India, I will have some students whom I can train to start the mission. So he tried a lot. In fact, Srila Prabhupada, he went to many of his friends, many of his family friends, friends, gentlemen, Hindus, and those Hindus who had four sons, five sons, he would beg them, why don't you give me one son? I will make him 
the preacher of Bhagavad Gita. You have four sons, you have three sons. Why did you keep one? Nobody was interested. Nobody. He said, Are they dying somebody? Nobody. So, Shri Prabhupada, he actually started printing magazines to distribute that. So now that he struggled a lot in teaching, you should read Shri Prabhupada's autobiography. With a small book, which is a Shri Prabhupada's autobiography. Very beautiful. You, you will come to know all these leelas of Sri Prabhupada. In fact, while struggling, he, he, he once was trying to distribute books in spiritual license in Delhi. One day, he was in small lanes of Delhi and a bull came and hit him. He fell down on the floor unconscious. He was a sannyasi. He already renounced from the family life. Nobody to take care. After some time, some people, you know, lifted him up, kept him aside. He woke up and went you know, with a great pain, you know, injured. He liked him, he cried. Then nothing was happening in India. He started an organization called the League of Devotees. But he had, he had one boy whom he initiated, Gizim Diksha. But that boy also was very much influenced by his family. You know, family brother? Hat? Santa Malaya? Hat? Like our Amogila Kabu says, no? You see? He tells a video of the Hindu Dakkar. You see that? In that video, he says, you know, nicely he says, you know, Hare, our Hindu Kabachi, Daru Pia, Ladiki, Ladiki, Lime Mare, Daru Pia, Jua Kele, and Hare, Acha Salvi, you know, Chipas. Mother brother, Gar Bota. और अगर भक्त बन गया रो रहे क्या छाती पीट पीट के रहेंगे छाती पीट पीट के रहेंगे यार क्या हो गया देखो इसको तो लेट मी द सिचुएशन शिव शिव लोग बात सही है द होल इंडिया इस फॉलोइंग द वेस्ट टू वर द वेस्ट माय गुरु महाराज टोल्ड मी लेट मी प्रीच टू द अमेरिकन सेलिब्रिटीज एंड ही वेंट देयर इट्स अ वेरी लॉन्ग स्टोरी व्हेन हाउ शिव प्रभुपा रीच द अमेरिका व्हाई ही वाज ऑन द शिप टुवर्ड्स he was he got two heart attacks he got he got he went in a cargo ship cargo ship you understand in which containers go luggage he went in that even how he got a ticket for that also is very connected whenever she proposed this to preach in india he used to tell them if you can help me a ticket to america will be very nice sponsor me a visa to america so one Mr. Agarwal, who had a son in America, sent a Gopal Agarwal. So he sponsored Prabhupada's ticket. Uh, he arranged a sponsorship for Shri Prabhupada to go to America in his sponsorship. So when Shri Prabhupada suddenly got a letter that he has a sponsorship to America and he did not have passport. After the sponsorship, he arranged his passport to go to America. He got a free ticket. That also is a very great story. How many from Mumbai? One lady called Sumati Muraji. Sumati Muraji. She stays in Juhu. She gave a free ticket. She was from Bhopal from Bandra. I used to come to Andheri station. From Andheri station, he used to walk to Juhu. And then sit there every day, three, three hours to request this lady to give a ticket. When he went to, when he got a ticket, he got to Heart attacks on a 31 day journey. How, what will we do if we get a heart attack? Next flight and come back. Isn't it? Krishna is indicating to me, I am old. This is not meant for me now. Correct? Niklo. Shri Prabhupada continue. You know why he continue? Our Acharyas give an explanation about it. He says, a sadhu. Why he goes out and preaches? Anyone knows this? Vaishnava is called Dukkha Dukkha. One of the reasons it is said that a spiritualist, 
साधुस देयर हार्ट्स ब्लीड बिकॉज़ दे सी ह्यूमैनिटी एट लार्ज इज सफरिंग एंड गोइंग टू हेल अंडरस्टैंड इज सफरिंग एंड गोइंग टू हेल दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजंस ऑफ दिस स्पीच देयर आर सम पीपल वर चूजन बाय द लॉर्ड अंडरस्टैंड इज स्प्रेड द मैसेज सम बाय कर्मा बिकम अ डॉक्टर एंड इंजीनियर ब्लाह 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 similarly some are chosen by the lord and the ones who are chosen have this in their heart so shri prabhupa when he uh, went to to america he landed with a heart attack he survived the heart attack when he landed and then he was preaching while preaching you know he made some devotees i'll send you some more details about this speech in god but while he was preaching there was a lot of struggle because in america say in india for example all of you when you saw any devotee in dhoti kurta you respected him right naturally you respect correct or not that is in our indian culture correct anyone in dhoti kurta who speaks in a city of india you respect actually But in America, it's not like that. We don't even know what is Dhoti. We don't know that. But Shri Prabhupada preached. They don't even know the culture. Therefore, in, in in India, if you come for a Gita class, will you put your legs straight in front of the face of the speaker and say, "Abhor us only"? Anyone of you said like this? Abhor. Anyone? No, no, nobody. That's our culture, but that's not that in America. Shri Prabhupada was living in the house of Gopal Agarwal, whose wife was an American. So Shri Prabhupada used to keep vegetables for himself in the fridge, and in the same fridge, she used to keep chicken and meat at the above section of the fridge. And one day Shri Prabhupada preached there, and he made some with great struggle. He made some devotees. So one of the devotees were driving Shri Prabhupada to a city on the side. So while driving, they left early in the morning. So this devotee, he tells you later on, with tears in his eyes, after Shri Prabhupada is gone, he shares this pastime. He tells me he was so uncultured. He said when I was taking Shri Prabhupada to a park early in the morning, I had one apple, and I took a bite of the apple. And then I gave it to Sri Prabhupada. I said, Swami, would you like to have some? You know, he took a bite of that fruit, and he gave it to Sri Prabhupada. I said, Swami, would you have to have some? So I died. Lot of struggles Sri Prabhupada went. In fact, but when the mission was established, after the struggle, because he never compromised. If you don't compromise. Krishna empowers him. When Shri Prabhupada was starting his mission, he preached very boldly, very very strongly. Like when he went to London, when he went to London for the first time. So, you know, already some of the devotees were preaching in London. Shri Prabhupada said that some of the devotees they were preaching in London. So when Shri Prabhupada came to London, there were a lot of people to greet Shri Prabhupada in London. Have you seen the video? Prabhupada arriving in the airport. How many of you see? Shri Prabhupada arrives at the airport. People from London, the London young, young, you know, youths of the London, many of them, Dutti Kurta, they are welcoming. So the reporters came and they asked Shri Prabhupada, Swami Ji, why have you come to London? Why have you come to our country? What is the reason? We have our religion. Why have you come here? <coughs> He said, "I have not come here to take anything. I have come to give you something which you forgot to take when you were there in our country for three years. I have come to give you the Vedic culture, by which a human being actually becomes a human being. That was Shri Prabhupada's speech. One day, Shri Prabhupada was describing about hell, and reporter asked." Shri Prabhupada, practically tell me how is hell. 
Then if Prabhupada is very fortunate, Prabhupada is a glutton. He said, hell is my glutton. There is no sun in hell, and there is no sun in hell. And do you know? The sun doesn't, how many of you know? The sun doesn't rise in London. If, if the sun rises in London, it's a Diwali. They celebrate that. There is no sun. So like that. One day, one person asked, Swamiji, are you God realized? Prabhupada took my attention. He took other questions. The person again put the mic in front of me. Swamiji, are you God realized? So Prabhupada looked at him and said, If I say yes, will you accept it? It took him few seconds to understand what Shri Prabhupada said. Prabhupada told him something. If I say yes, will you accept it? All reporters are looking at him. <laughs> yes, we say. Because Shri Prabhupada will have to make two options. Yes or no, for himself. And put a question to him, right? If I say yes, will you accept it? So, the fellow went back and said, that won't be difficult. <laughs> then Srila Prabhupada said, Then what is the use of such a nonsense question? <laughs> there was one reporter asking Swami, one young lady, a reporter, Swami, why do you shave your heads? And Prabhupada answered some other question. Again, she put the mic. Swami, why do you people shave your heads? The third time when she asked, she asked, Shri Prabhupada said, she was in a minister and she had legs. Prabhupada said, why do you shave your legs? And all the people were looking at her. And she was embarrassed, frozen. Prabhupada said, it's better to have a cool head than cool legs. <laughs> Though there is a reason why we shave it, people are so ignorant. Shri Prabhupada's preaching was very special. He never used to get into answering the question. He used to awake, awake the ignorance of the question of the questioner. Do you understand the point? He used to awake the ignorance of the question of the questioner. That was Sri Prabhupada. That is how he presented the Vedic philosophy. That is how he presented the Vedic philosophy. One day, there was some discussion on the spiritual world. And Prabhupada was explaining that everything cannot be seen. You need qualification. You need spiritual eyes. You need a spiritual body to know spiritual subjects. But by knowledge, you can realize. That's why you cannot see air. But you have some information about air. And some experience that air is there, right? And then you accept it. So one person has some unnecessary argument. <coughs> Seeing is believing, seeing is believing, seeing is believing. So Prabhupada told him, Have you seen why your father is your father? How he become your father? The guy was finished. He was acting over smart. And then Prabhupada just put question. Have you seen why your father is your father? How he become your father? Have you seen that? <coughs> Hatam. Finished or dead shot when they finish? Isn't it true? What can you answer? Can you answer this? You will accept it, no? Because your mother is telling you he is your father. Prabhupada said, will you find out? No. You will accept whomever your mother says is your father. Similarly, what is, who are we? Who is God? What is this world? Why it is created? What is our relationship to God? Who is God? Is mentioned in the scriptures, which are like mothers. And we accept. We accept. Have you ever heard anyone preaching like this? Have you ever heard? That's how Shri Prabhupada preached. And then, what Shri Prabhupada did is, he said the whole world is falling to the west. I will go to America and you know, make the Americans a devotee of Krishna. Bring them to India and then Indians will see them and become devotees of Krishna. And that is exactly it. This Maya Dham is a symbol of that preaching. 
Shri Prabhupada Ji. Jai. When you walk in, did you see festivals here? Yeah. Why not here? Tomorrow when you attend Mangal Arkham in our festival, you'll see. So many of you will be doing it. And when Shri Prabhupada in the 1970s, he brought young, bright, dhoti kurta, shaman head, Americans and Europeans. The whole nation was shocked. How many from Surat? Read the Gila Mahi. When Shri Prabhupada bought when Shri Prabhupada fought the Western Sadhus to India in Surat, the governor of Surat declared a holiday for the whole city to come and see the green people. Do you know that? That was the impact. And then when Shri Prabhupada came here to Mayapur, came here to Mayapur, it's a beautiful story now about Mayapur. When he came to Mayapur, he thought that this Mayapur is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Birthplace. Who is not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is Krishna. Who comes as his own devotee? I will tell about this tomorrow more in detail. But Krishna, when he comes as his own devotee, with his associates, is not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He appeared here. One of the reasons he came as his devotee is he wanted to teach the, the world how to become his devotees. When Krishna spoke the Gita and went, he saw from the up that though I spoke the knowledge, nobody is able to follow. How to be my devotee? I have to teach them. Who can teach better than me? I am only going to become my devotee. So he is that devotee. That is Panchita. That is why this Dham is very special. This Dham is a place where Lord Himself teaches how to become his devotee. Why? That I tell you more. But you know this one today. So, Prabhupada wanted that this place should be the headquarters, spiritual headquarters. So he came here and he told his disciples. One of his favorite disciples, very very close, Amal Krishna Maharaj. So Shri Prabhupada came here and he told, I want the land here. There is a Shri Prabhupada's hut. You will get an opportunity to see. A small hut, that's a place everyone lived in the initial days. You will see dialogues also there. So Shri Prabhupada lived there. And told, I want to have a spiritual city. And Srila Prabhupada took his initial young American European disciples on a walk. That also you will see photos around. He's walking in all jungle and fields around. And he looks here, right there where the hut is. He sees this whole place. Whole place what he was sitting now around his building. It was just forest and nice field. And Srila Prabhupada looks around and he says, this will be the spiritual headquarters of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. To all his disciples were just worried because Calcutta, you, you travel from Calcutta to Maya, it's a long journey, no? You were thinking who is going to come here, first of all. Second thing, the only thing what is visible is Overgrown grasses, rice field and jungle. I don't know what Srila Prabhupada says, spiritual headquarters. <laughs> but now you see, after 50 years, it's become a city. Uh, this one has 700 acres of land. How much? 700 acres. Are you going to understand? How much is an acre? Do you know that? Do you know how much is a square feet? This room must be one fourth of it. No, less than one fourth. One fourth. And one acre is 40,000 square feet. One acre is? And this 700 acres is for homes. So the proper said, we make a spiritual city here. So, Shri Prabhupada slowly stood by his disciples and he brought all this land. And Shri Prabhupada left by them. But this place is surrounded by you know, Muslims. Fully surrounded. So one day, in 1984, 10th of March, 9th or 10th of March, midnight, 40 to 50 decades, they attacked the temple here. 
and they took away the duty of Srimati Radharani and Srila Prabhupada. On the altar you will see small Ashtadhati, golden looking deities. Only they were worshipped. And they were being stolen by the ducats. When the ducats were stealing them, the devotees woke up and they actually revolved and fought against them. Guns were shot. Security guards, they ran into the toilet, locked themselves with the guns out of fear. Srila Prabhupada disciples, one disciple from the Chandra Mahaprabhu Jaraja was told. They actually came out, broke the door, and the toilet, took the gun and shot to save the devotees. In that whole battle, a lot of commotion was there. Srila Prabhupada already left this world. So devotees were very really disturbed. They said, what to do? How do we go ahead now? So everyone remember that similar incident had happened in the past and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasa Thakur installed a video of the So they thought, let us invite Lord Narasimha Dev to stay in Mayapur. The whole management decided, let us bring Narasimha Dev deity and Worship him. But now what to do? The, the then leader, he writes, the one who brings the video, he writes the story how he Narasimha appeared here. It is said that one of the leaders, Bhavananda Prabhu, he made a sketch of Narasimha And Akvatarta Prabhu, who writes this story, he takes the sketching of Lord Narasimha Dev when he goes to South India and he searches a Stapati. Stapati is a uh, what do you call it? Sachra. who carves the deities. Stapati is a little beyond that. They don't only carve the deities, they also know the worship standards and the temple architecture. How to, what kind of stone to be used. They don't only start, they understand the philosophy. So, he, the Stapati whom he, Atmarapu went, the first one saw the drawing and he said, ah, this is Ugra Narsim, the freshest form of Narsim Adil, where he is searching for Hiranakashi. Who? Hiranakashi. He said, these forms, I will not be able to go to some place. So Akvatakatapu, he goes to two, three more sculptures. But nobody agrees. Disappointed, he comes back and tells everyone in Mayapur. One devotee, Radha Bhattabhu, he gives one lakh ten thousand in advance. He just pay the money, get the reading. We want to install Narasimha within six months in Mayapur. Why? You know? Because Narasimha is a protecting form. What is that? He appeared only for one reason. What? So we should protect the dham first, protect the land here. So the devotees can be protecting, they can perform the, uh, their bhajan and also build the project. So, again he was sent back to the same first tapati who told him this, Ugra Narsim. Then he saw, this time he made it sit and showed him some scriptures which describes this form. The form was called Narsim there. Bend a little bit. Hands like this, very angrily looking out. It is a form of Lord Narasimha Dev just before jumping out of the pillar and searching for Hiranakashi. So, the, he said that these forms are really not worshipped. So, but it is a very ferocious form. Not, not worshipped in this planet. It's a, so then he went again to other scriptures, scriptures and nobody was interested. Again he went back to Mayapur, again sent back to go to the same person. This time when he met this sculpture, the sculpture immediately before he could Akvadatta Prabhu thought that this time I will collect his feet and hold his feet. Then he agrees that Bharatabha. But to his surprise, the sculpture, who is a devotee also, 
He says, before the Atma Padma could request, he tells him, okay, I will make this deity for you. More amazing in the story how he agreed. <coughs> His guru was Adi Shankar Acharya of Kamishpura. And the guru, he met his guru and told him that this Hare Krishna people, they have approached me and they wanted me to make a deity of Narsimhadi. So the guru asked him, which deity of Narsimhadi? He said, Kugra deity. Kugra deity? I said, even in Kugra, he showed the drawing. He had that in a drawing. He said that they want to make this Kugra. The guru saw it. Hmm? This is Sthanu Narsimha. This form is not worshipped. In fact, are they very serious? Do, do, do they know the consequences of any offense to this form? Any mistake in its worship? Do they know? Do the Hare Krishna people know? And then the Guru told him the story. He said, near Mysore there was a village. In that village, they worshipped Ogra Narsimha. And the worship used to be very virtuous. And they would do grand festivals, elegant processions for Narsimha. Slowly, slowly the standard declined. And standard declined and that place became a very disturbed place. With quarrels, robbery, so many unwanted things. And now that place has become a ghost haunted place. Nobody is able to live there peacefully. So the army are really serious. And then he said, I am not going to make the disciple talk. But the day Atma Dhatma reached there, the Sthapati received a letter from his guru where he gave him some instructions about various services and in the footnote he wrote, for the Hare Krishna is called, you make this guru. And then Atma Dhatma adds the story. So the Sthapati told him in the sixth, he asked him, how much time it will take? So then six months were ready to be ready. After that, he came back, big festival here, Narsimha Devi is coming. After four months, he took a lot of money, went to South India, purchased a lot of brass paraphernalia worship. Lamps, arctic plates, everything. And then he went to the Stapati. Thinking that, Didi will be ready, I will make the right way to do. So when he reached there, he said, Oh, is our Didi ready? Uh, how much will it is? What, what kind of you know, transport I will need to take it back to Mayapur. This was in South India. So when you come in on Stop it. Which did it? Our did it? Narsimhade? Yeah. I want to make the did but I have not yet got the stone. He went mad because he had all the peripherals in a small tempo travel. You know? Man. You see, we are waiting for the DT installation. Installing on Narsimhadev. In next two months. He said, this is not a doll. The Vishnu forms. Then he explained in very important signs also of DT worship. He said, the Vishnu forms are made out of very special stone. These stones have life. And the stones, there are two tests which is done. Before concluding, this is bona fide stone to carve a deity. One is there are different parts, different uh, different boundaries of this stone where you have to hit with another stone and it makes a different sound. That is one sign. Second sign, there is a bug which eats this stone. It has to pass through one side and creating a full transparent hole in the other side. If these two things are done, that deity, a Vishnu form, can be carved. And after I get that carved form, stone, then six months your deity will be ready. <laughs> after that, he went mad when he had power. After two months, he came back again. By the time his tapati got the stone, and he started carving the deity. For days together, he sat with the deity alone, thinking how the Lord wants to manifest. Without science and philosophy. How the Lord was in 
and then finally he got a beautiful degree on the Ansonet. And then he had a village, in, you know, marriage in his village. He came to DD in the his, as it is in his store workshop, and then he came for the marriage. As soon as he came back, he got the news that there's a fire in his store. He came back, everything burned into ashes, except on a single DD. He saw the DD, and the DD in its vision told him. He understood <coughs> that the Lord wants his worship to start. He called immediately after the Kutu by a phone call and told him, Come, the Lord wants his worship to start. Please take it. After the Kutu took a big <coughs> truck and sand on it. The DT was you know, maybe 1,000 tons, ton, tons, hundreds of tons, 1,000 tons, I think. Very difficult to live. Very great difficulty with the train it was put on the track. Now, from Tamil Nadu to Mayapur, you have to cross more than three to four states. And every state has more to ten to twelve check post. And these kind of DTs, no, you all will go and take Darshan of Narsimha. These kind of DTs, they need a very special, very, very special archaeological department's permission. No, they do they look like ancient people. So you need to pass a lot of documents. You need to start the journey. Every check post and every government official who came to inspect the DD saw the DD half and signed seeing the DD signed it. Signed the paper. Saw the DD as a paper. Even though the check post people will come. <laughs> And then with a long journey of two weeks, we say, when the arrived here, in 1984, this incident happened, in 1986, 86 or 85, Lord was installed. There were so many stories of Lord Narsimadev talking to the devotees, coming in the dream. This is very, very special. This is Dham Raksha. Protecting the Dhar and its devotees. So, this is how Lord Narsimadev appeared here in Mayapur. How many of you take a darshan of Lord Narsimadev? Many of you are here to take one. So, you go and take darshan of Lord Narsimadev now. And there is a story of Panchadar Kors, how they appeared here. But I think that story I will tell tomorrow. No? Tell and how many of you? I tell the story of Achyatakra with the story of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tomorrow. Okay? So now you all can go and take darshan. The beautiful darshan of Radha Mahadev. See, my experience and many of the devotees' experience, when they took the first darshan of Radha Mahadev, in the material world, they would say, Love at first sight. When you have spiritual knowledge and you have a spiritual vision, what spirit is, what spiritual world is, how God is, how He is a controller, He is a maintainer, He is a creator. We all are created by Him. When we understand God's position and have knowledge, with that and in association, it is said that in the scriptures that have you been to holy place before in your life? Have you been to a holy place before in your life? How many of you have been to a holy place before also? How many of you have been to a holy place? Holy place. Vrindavan, Mathura, Ayodhya, Pandarpur. Green, right? Many of you green. Right? It is said the holy place doesn't reveal itself to general masses. It only reveals itself when one goes in association of the devotee. You understand? The Holy Dham also reveals itself when you go in association of devotees. When you see Radha Mahalo, it is like the spiritual love at first sight. You will see that. Now you go and you will experience that. And beautiful Panchitata, tomorrow you will come to know about him. And Narsimha Dev, now you know about him. Very, very merciful. Hare Krishna. Shri Mayapur Dham Ki. So all of you can